Hello everyone, my name is Ian Lamont and I'm the author of Google Drive and Docs in 30 Minutes. And today I'm going to be talking about using Google Search. And I'm doing this because I realize that a lot of people, they don't know how to use some of the most effective tools in Google Search to get the results that you want. And of course, Google makes it really easy just to type something into the box on Google.com or on the Google app and you'll see a bunch of results. But what happens oftentimes is you're presented with uh, millions of results and you're not even sure if what's showing up there is actually most relevant to you, especially since uh, Google, they, uh, they accept advertisers and also there's a lot of people out there who frankly are manipulating Google results in ways that make the most uh, not valuable results show up, high, show up higher and they push down the results that might be uh, more useful. So, Basically, I'm going to show you some tips on how to get the most out of Google Search. It'll take about five minutes and this can help you right away. So uh, here's Google.com. I don't know why there's this running Canadian guy here, but anyways, let's say that I'm interested in learning more about uh, a bird called a hummingbird. So I type in hummingbird and it show, first it, it, Google shows suggested results below it, like uh, food recipe. I'm assuming that means the food that hummingbirds eat, not making a recipe out of hummingbird meat. Uh, but there's other things too, migration, nectar. Let's just say I just want to see all the results for hummingbird. So here's what I see. There are 85 million results for hummingbird. Not surprisingly, Wikipedia shows up at the top of the results. This is a very common thing. And the problem with Wikipedia showing up at the top of the results is sometimes Wikipedia is not the most reliable source of information, particularly concerning news, current events, and famous people. Uh, Wikipedia is, has uh, been manipulated quite a bit, and you may not be finding the most relevant results. Uh, the Wiki this Wikipedia entry for the species, uh, sorry, for the bird, hummingbird, that might have a lot of good information. But let's say that I'm looking for information that's more focused on a type of hummingbird called the ruby-throated hummingbird. And here's the first tip that's uh, pretty special. If you put something in quotation marks, like ruby or ruby-throated, whoops, type that wrong. This tells Google to look for the phrase ruby-throated, the exact same phrase in any page that mentions hummingbird. And let's see what shows up. So this is found a lot of pages, actually 3,200,000 results for hum the, uh, a page that has mentions hummingbirds, but also this specifically the ruby-throated type. So that really reduced the number of pages that I have to go through, but it's still quite a bit. And maybe what I want to do is actually tell, tell, uh, tell this Google search to, to focus it a bit more by adding the phrase Massachusetts. And let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say Eastern Massachusetts. So I'm looking for pages that mention hummingbird plus the specific phrase ruby-throated and then Eastern Massachusetts. And let's see what comes up. So that really cut it down. Right now, there's only 1,000, about 2,000 results that mention Eastern Massachusetts. Okay, this is good. But let's say I want to focus things a little bit more uh, and actually... I don't want to include Eastern Massachusetts. Google makes that easy just by adding the minus symbol uh, next to the next to the next to the phrase that, or the word that you want to eliminate. So I've just typed hummingbird, uh, and then in quotes ruby throated, and then in another I typed the phrase Eastern Massachusetts in quotes, but I put a minus symbol in front of it. And let's see what turns up. So. Again, we're back to three, you know, 3.3 million results that do not mention Eastern Massachusetts. But you can see by either uh, have it, adding the minus or removing it, that really can that really can change the results that you see. So here, here, here we have again hummingbird, ruby-throated, Eastern Massachusetts. Now, let's say that I want to just still. This is a lot. This is 2,000 pages. Let's say I want to rest restrict it even further to just pages in on the site YouTube. So the way that Google wants to see this is you type site, colon, and then YouTube, whoops, YouTube.com. This means it will search for these 
these elements here, including these exact phrases, Eastern Massachusetts and Ruby Throated, but only on the site youtube.com. Let's see what turns up. No results found. Okay, maybe my search was too restricted. So let's, let's remove Eastern Massachusetts and see what turns up. Okay, so here are a whole bunch of videos on YouTube uh, that specifically mention the ruby-throated hummingbird. So that's pretty useful. Now, one other thing that's worth mentioning, when you search for, let's get rid of the site, youtube.com. So here we are back at uh, the 3.2 3 million results for ruby-throated hummingbird. At the top, Google already includes different types of pages, including videos. So if I click on this, it will show these YouTube videos again, but it will also show videos from other sources. Um, I don't see any right here, but other sources might include Vimeo.com or Dailymotion or other websites that show uh, videos. Uh, whereas if I typed site, so uh, let's take a look at this, 56,300 56, 56, results for all kinds of videos that have this. But what if I just restrict it to YouTube? Again, site, colon, youtube.com. See how the number drops? It dropped from 56,000 to 17,000. So of the videos, only 17,000 have um, are on YouTube. But if I remove that, still searching the videos area, 56,000 results. Um, and then it's, it's also worth mentioning that if I wanted to, I could search in news. So there's somebody on madison.com published a story about ruby-throated hummingbirds remain dizzying mystery. And there's other news stories here. And then images. And I actually use the images search quite a bit. Uh, maybe I need an image for a presentation I'm making or for a blog post. And of course, you know, you should only use images that you have the copyright available for or it's public domain. Uh, but one thing that I like to do when I search for images of something, and then if you click on it, for instance, this is the Audubon source, which is a pretty reputable one. You can right-click on it, and then you can, um, you can view the image or copy the image location. But one thing that I like to do, let's get out of this, is I like to find only the really big images. And you'll notice on the right side, it says Settings or Tools. Click on Tools, and then use, Usage Rights. So for instance, I could find I could I could find just the images that allow, uh, for instance, non-commercial use with modification or non-commercial reuse. Let's see how many there are. That's pretty good. So I can use if, if I'm making like a presentation for school or for uh, work and I'm not getting paid for it. Uh, I could use these images. The, the, these have been legally tagged as usable uh, for this for this particular purpose. But also, if I want to restrict the size, so right now it's any size. What if I just want larger than uh, two megapixels, 1600 by 1200. These are pretty big pictures, and here they are. So this is really great. That means I can get the highest quality, the biggest pictures by using Google Search. For more information on how to get the most out of the Google Drive and Docs and Sheets and Slides, I've written a book about it. It does talk about uh, Search in Google Drive as well, which use many of the same techniques. Uh, check out my book, Google Drive and Docs in 30 Minutes, available from in30minutes.com. And thank you so much for watching.